You fed off me when I was a baby. And I'm supposed to feel what? Sorry for you? This is such a terrible thing to feel sorrow for your enemy. Well, what is he? Except a brother with another name. We're not brothers. What's up guys, Ryan and Greg here, and we're back for another episode of Legion Season 2, Episode 3, Chapter 11. Yes, now before we get started, make sure to subscribe to GameSpot Universe where we got you covered for more TV breakdowns, including Westworld, which comes back next week. I'm psyched. More robots. That's the robot dance. Yeah, yeah this is for real robots. Okay. Yeah, you know. All right, so this episode was directed by Sarah Adina Smith. Now she's best known for her work for Buster's Mallheart, The Midnight Swim, and Room 104. Now the episode started out with one of those John Hamm narration. So the nocebo effect is when a person has a negative physical reaction from a suggested harm. And then they talk about the conversion disorder, which is mental stress that's converted to physical symptoms that are potentially contagious. Now the reason for opening the episode with this is obviously this happens with the monk and the chattering that goes through the monastery and then through all of Division Three. Yeah. It is a contagious virus that affects everyone involved. He's in there, right? His mind somewhere. Oh yes, brain readings remain normal. His mind is active, we just don't know what it's doing. Yeah, there's this recurring theme that the mind is so powerful that it can, can kind of create its own reality. Mm -hmm. And that is basically what it boils down to with Legion, right? I mean, he's- That's what David's his, doing. <laughs> he's David, from, even from the comic books and from the show, his mind is so powerful, the Shadow King's mind is so powerful that they can create a reality that is different from anything else. And then right off the bat, we got Amal Farouk in his battle with Charles Xavier in the opening shot. That's pretty cool. I can't tell you how much I love this. It was a really <laughs> awesome nod to season one. Uh, you can literally see in the reflection of his glasses the <laughs> astral plane battle that we saw on the chalkboard <laughs> sequence. But it also is an awesome nod to the comic books when uh, Professor X and uh, the Shadow King Amal Farouk actually met face to face. And they're literally sitting in a restaurant. I mean, he has the two women on his side and uh, they battle on the astral plane. Professor X obviously beats him. He dies, his body is no more. Um, but then his, his consciousness, his, his, his spirit is, you know, onto the astral plane and stuck there. So awesome, fun Easter egg for comic book fans. All you needed was a quick little couple, a, a short sequence to literally give us some background on where the hell is Amal Farouk's body. Okay, and then one of the big scenes in this episode is the conversation between Farouk and David. Yeah. Uh, he's morally ambiguous. At least they're trying to make the character that way. We don't know. I, after this episode, I'm more certain that Farouk is screwing with David. I, I, I am too, 100%. I totally agree with you. Um, I am, however, intrigued by the idea that Professor X isn't enti entirely a good guy. Like, there is some nuance to that especially when it comes to a comic book character like Legion. Mm -hmm. um, like what if there is no good and, and, or, and or bad? Like no black or white like that. No like big bad. Some, yeah, there's no big bad. It's, 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 it's within all of us. There are good and bad and Professor X, maybe he wasn't 100% genuine in all of his intentions. He comes. Does he speak our language? Does he know our customs? And he decides what? That my people should have better? that he knows better? Who is he to make such choices? I think that's an interesting thing to try to examine here, but I don't know if they're gonna do that. Like you, I kind of feel that they're just um, making you just more and more skeptical of Amal Farouk. Um, with every scene. With every scene that we see him. I mean, then he returns back to Division Three, and again, the whole place is, like all hell is broken loose. Yeah after his conversation with him. Where is everybody? I don't know. There were alarms. I heard guns and Carrie went, but I, I'm not physically brave, so. About that scene when everything goes to hell, yeah, that was cool because David tries to leave and Farouk stops him to talk to him for a second. And Almost then like he's stalling or something. Yeah, where he's stalling and then the cameras start to sway back and forth, back and forth, just yeah. disorienting a little bit. I loved it. We don't know what to believe right now. That's the theme of this episode and going on with the show right now. We don't know what to believe. Yeah. How about how about Lenny in that scene? Um, what did you think about? She was like hanging in the background, yeah. and then she's there's no way out. She's stuck. It's like purgatory. Yeah. She's like stuck there, and um, I was actually kind of shocked that David um, 
doesn't have any sympathy towards her or try to like help her out of this. He doesn't know who that is. He doesn't even know if that's really Lenny. He doesn't know what to believe anymore. Right. So he doesn't know who that person was he was talking to the entire time. Yeah. And also at the same time, she was screwing with him. So Lenny was really in his head the whole entire time, yeah. moving him along. So Lenny's not going anywhere. Lenny's staying right there in the astral plane. Dude, you gotta help me. I'm dying out here. So back at Division Three, like we said, all hell breaks loose. Mm -hmm. Literally everyone is gone, um, except for the kids that are now following the monk. And Carrie's there, and there's a cow. Yeah, it's like he's setting a trap. The monk is, or... Oliver, we don't know where the actual Shadow King's body is. They never showed Oliver in this entire episode. Right. So we don't know what's going on with him. But at the same time, the monk, he waited for David to go into the astral plane and then set his little trap with the kids and everybody. We don't know why the monk did this, though. Right. We have no idea. Shadow King, obviously, Amal Fruks says that the monk is the one doing this to everybody. Um, the monk doesn't want the Shadow King to find his body. There's a lot of like competing, he said, she said, he said, she said, you know, going on. Um, I, I thought it was a really awesome couple moments when we saw them go into the mind mazes. Mm -hmm. First, Potonomy um, going into his mind and trying to break them out of this, uh, the, what the catalyst has done to them. Yeah, Potonomy's literally stopping to smell the roses. I love it. He's just every second he forgets everything that's going on. Yeah, I, th I thought that was really cool. That was a beautiful moment, and they even mentioned that in the uh, in the show itself. You know, he remembers everything, and mm -hmm. this is his core desire to just kind of forget. And he's just stuck in a loop of forgetting and forgetting and forgetting. Um, so getting him out of there was awesome. I like how David has the little ET finger in order to get people out. Which is new. I, all right, so I didn't know he could do that. Powers yeah, now. that's hey, David's powers. We, we, he still doesn't know his own powers, right? So, yeah, he has ET fingers in order to get people out of their own mind maze. And then we get to Melanie. Um, what do you think the whole Melanie sequence? That's like uh, someone on Reddit pointed this out that it's basically what Ready Player One should have had in it. <laughs> it's like a good, good video game maze you're going through. Right. I love that. One I was, of those old text-based arcade uh, 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 computer games. I would lose my mind. I'd, literally if I got stuck in there. I, there's no way I would I would flip that damn keyboard over and walk out. But I thought it was pretty damn awesome. <laughs> she misses her husband, obviously, and she wanted to be carefree and help people. And, and in this mind maze, she's this all-powerful control center that is playing a game with whoever's in there. Um, the scariest part, though, is that the Minotaur is there. Mm -hmm. I still have no clue who the Minotaur is, but he always shows up when she is there. Is it a delusion that's just grown so strong that it's always present inside her or around her? Um, that was freaky. It shows, it, well, it creeped into her room too, so we don't yeah. know, again, that little egg, the little creature Minotaur, it got into Potonomy's ear, so it's a real thing, at least we're supposed to think it is. Right. And it could be in everybody in Division 3, for all we know. Also, that scene reminds me a lot. I, I say this every week, but another Twin Peaks reference mm -hmm. here is, again, that little bug reminded me of the bug that crawled into, I think it was Sarah Palmer's mouth in Episode 8 of The Return. It's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going back a little bit. What's up with the cows? Yeah, that one, that one I was like, what the hell is this? Uh, I, I initially thought the cow was literally Sid. I thought that, that Sid escaped from the cat, mm -hmm. all this stuff was going on, and she hid in the cow, and it was just she couldn't communicate with the she rest of the crew. She screwed up with her yeah. powers, she's like, oh, shit, I'm trapped. Yeah, but then, uh, you know, quick, quick little research, you know, cows are like India's most sacred animal uh, in, in Hindu and Buddhist religion. Uh, you know, it, they represent patience and holiness, but the symbol of a cow in the middle of a hallway with red everywhere, it, it made me just feel a little bit uneasy. Yeah, with everything flashing, everything's yeah. going crazy, and then a cow telling you to be patient, which is a major theme again of Twin Peaks, the return, patience. And then the monk takes control of Fukuyama and the Vermilion through some kind of like mind control through uh, whatever. That was, yeah, that was trippy. It yeah. was like exorcist style in the middle, in the, in the corner of the mm -hmm. ceiling <laughs> and t speaking through the Vermilion. But yeah, clearly the monk doesn't trust anyone at Division 3. They were promised that there would be a weapon to fight off the Shadow King at Division 3. Mm -hmm. Right when I heard weapon, I literally thought of David. It's, it's the no-brainer. <laughs> He's the weapon to fight Shadow King. But Shadow King has already kind of 
compromised David, so he's not one to be trusted, and the monk knows this. So the monk just pieces out and jumps right off the building. He's like, I'm done. It already has. Yeah, he would rather die than it. give up the location of Farouk's body. Yep. Which, which means that this is very serious. It's not, he's not taking it lightly. That means he would lose his life to not let Farouk find his body. Because yep. that means bad news for everybody involved. And the episode ends with David finding Sid. Unfortunately, the catalyst has also gotten to her, so she's chattering. And he decides to um, you know, touch her on the shoulder. I don't think they touch skin. So I think he's cool. Yeah, I don't think you got to worry about that anyways. I don't think the filmmakers care too much anymore if they touch, because he's been in her mind so right. many times. Right. Uh, but yes, no skin. No skin. Just the, just the shoulder. So he enters her mind, and he's in the middle of a snowstorm. Igloo in there, And there's an igloo in the back there, and basically that, that's the end. Mm -hmm. So next episode, it looks like we're going to get Sid's mind maze, and how he's going to free her from that. And who knows the possibilities of what that's going to entail. And jumping back and forth through time, it looks like, in her head. Um, whatever happens here, like you said, is probably going to create the future Sid that we see now. Yeah. All right, let's talk about our favorite moments from episode three. What you got? I love the little montage they have with the monks, where David goes into the monk's mind. And it's just basically a retelling of uh, the Telltale Heart. So yeah, Farouk banging on the egg or whatever that is, his casket, and yeah. causing just like everyone to lose their minds. Yeah. I thought that was cool. And his little like side, like, oh, they think it's me that's causing that issue with the chattering. No, that's the monk. Well, actually, it is you. You made them all go crazy, <laughs> and some of them commit suicide. Yeah. I really enjoyed uh, Patonomy and Melanie's mind mazes. That whole sequence was awesome. But one of the funniest parts for me was when Carrie and Carrie, you know, they're split now. And then female Carrie had to kind of learn how to react to the world around her and her just like live, eating, right? Her eating food. Her eating food, cream soda, and then <laughs> the whole bathroom sequence is just hysterical. Do you want me to come in and help No, her? no, I'm, uh, I got it. Speaking of the Carries, what do you think happened at the end with them when hmm. male Carrie just disappeared? He touched her, she was chattering, he touched her and then did he go into her astral plane? Is he dead? That would be weird if he's just if he's gone now. I don't think he's dead. Cause I don't think I didn't think that he would have the power to enter her mind. But maybe like since she was going crazy, he, she was infected that she was losing her other half or something like that. He's the other half that she's lost. Could this all be a dream? Are they all still stuck somewhere? Again, I keep bringing that up because we don't know what the hell is going on in Division Three yet. It's basically Inception. Okay, final thoughts, questions, what do you got here? You know, my first one is, like, is David cured at all from his mental illness from season one? Uh, I, I definitely do not think so. Just because the Shadow King is no longer within him, mm -hmm. mental illness is a much uh, more significant thing, and that, I think it's a, does a disservice to those that are suffering from it to just say, oh, this mutant just left my body and now I'm okay. So I'm perfect. Again. that's why I think that this season, David is still dealing with issues and we can't really trust him. He's an unreliable narrator, right? Like we cannot trust what he's going through because he is still sick and he's still going through yeah. his symptoms. And one last thing on the Minotaur, since now we know it's an actual physical thing, if you go back to the first episode, when it crawls under the bed, it got Sid or David. I'm assuming it got David. And we saw it again later, I think, when he yeah. was doing the Terminator naked thing. We saw some some slime near him too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're definitely right on that. Or is it just, are there plenty of them? Are they getting in every room? Like, we don't know yet. Guys, What's get, rid going of, on? Get, rid of the, get rid of the insect infestation over there. <laughs> Come on, use some raid. Get John Goodman. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I'm bad. And now, we got this in the comment section last week, too, and after this episode, I'm totally down to believe that the colors are f***ing with us this time around. Yeah. Take it with a grain of salt with the colors you see going on screen, especially in the ending where they're on the rooftop and the green arrow and the green hands are pointing at David, but then you also have like that green, that red flashing light pointing at David at the exact same time. Right. 
they're screwing with you. They're just messing with us. It was yeah. clear last year, right? Blue was was good and peaceful and David, and then red was always when the Shadow King mm -hmm. showed up. This year, they're completely switching stuff as a delusion might do to your perception of reality. So they're literally just screwing with us. I love it so much. And I have to bring this up again because it's a big topic, but Professor X. Yes. Um, I just feel like they're teasing his ultimate arrival at the end of this show. He, in the comic, Why? he's in that corner of the room. Right, so like, <laughs> If any, and then they have a conversation about him. They're talking about like he wasn't the guy that you thought think he was. He wasn't this all great guy. He came in into Farouk's world, and he and he you know started. He was the white man making decisions stuff like that, and trying to tell him um, what he could do and how he could live. And he decides what that my people should have better. That he knows better. Who is he to make such choices? I just think it's, they're teasing it so heavily. Please, just bring Professor X. I need to see Professor X in this one. I'm, I'm on board, but now I'm thinking maybe it's just a different actor. They could have just got somebody else to play that character. Greg, I, hey, how dare you? I'm sorry. How it, dare you? It may not be James McAvoy or Patrick Stewart. That's all I'm saying. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm ready. Why aren't their eyes open? I don't know. Tuesday. You shouldn't touch her. She doesn't like to be touched. You said you saw the future? You're in the maze, caught in a loop of your own life. You think ghosts like living in a haunted house?